Now that the sample chips have been polished, it is important to ensure that the surface is free of any grit or debris before epoxying it to a glass slide. This is especially important if you are polishing your chips using loose grit on a glass plate or wheel, as the fine grit or rock particulates removed from the sample may cling to the surface or remain embedded within small fractures in the chip. To remove these, the chips will be placed inside an ultrasonic cleaner which produces high frequency sound waves that travel through a specially designed water tank rather than through the air. The waves cause the water molecules to vibrate rapidly which tears the liquid apart and creates tiny vacuum cavities called cavitation bubbles. These bubbles, which are about the size of a red blood cell, quickly lose their structural integrity and collapse violently under the pressure of continuous vibration. The implosion of these bubbles near the surface of our sample chips emits a high-powered, high-velocity stream of plasma that collides with and removes tiny particles from the surface. Once the ultrasonic cleaner is turned on, it'll run for a few minutes and shut off automatically when it's complete. While waiting for the ultrasonic cleaner to finish, this is a good time to set up the hot plate and the materials needed to epoxy the sample chips to the frosted slides. The chips will need to be heated, which will allow the epoxy to flow more easily and cure faster. A temperature set at around 120 degrees Celsius is usually sufficient. While the hot plate heats up, and before the chips in the ultrasonic cleaner are finished, this is a good time to set out the supplies and epoxies we'll be using. There are a variety of different thin section epoxies that may be used, so you will need to familiarize yourself with the proper use of the epoxy that you have. Here at Nova, we are using a common thin section epoxy from Hillquist, which comes in two parts, part A and part B, that must be mixed together before being applied to a sample chip and cemented to a glass slide. Mixing them together in the proper proportion results in a chemical reaction that hardens or cures the epoxy. Once the chips have finished in the ultrasonic cleaner, they can be removed and placed on a clean paper towel to absorb the excess water. Care should be taken not to recontaminate the polished surface by touching it or setting it down on dusty or gritty surfaces. Once the chips have been removed and dried off, they may be placed, polished side up, onto the hot plate. Heating the chip up will allow the epoxy, when it is applied, to flow more easily over the polished surface, soak into any pores or microfractures, and cure faster after it has been attached to a slide. We use a sheet of aluminum foil as a base to prepare the epoxy, spread it onto the hot polished surface of the sample chips, and apply the frosted glass slides. The epoxy that we use is mixed together in a 7 to 3 ratio. Using small plastic bottles filled with part A and B, we approximate this ratio by squeezing out 7 drops of part A and 3 drops of part B that we will mix together. Once the appropriate amount of epoxy has been distributed, the two will need to be mixed together. We use a toothpick, but a coffee stir or popsicle stick are also commonly used to blend the epoxies together. The two must be well mixed, but care should be taken to create as few air bubbles as possible. Using the tongs, the sample chips, which have been heating up on the hot plate, may now be retrieved and placed polished side up on the sheet of foil. Using the toothpick, epoxy may now be applied to the polished surface of the hot sample chip. The heat will reduce the viscosity of the epoxy and allow it to flow more easily across the surface and to seep into any pores or microfractures in the sample. Many rocks are porous, including some that you might not expect, so you must let the epoxy soak and penetrate fully into your sample or the thin section may not survive the final grinding stages. Spread the epoxy, wait for it to soak in, apply some more epoxy, and if necessary, repeat until no more epoxy soaks into the chip. When finished, you should have an even and uniform layer of epoxy on the polished surface. Once enough epoxy has been applied, we are ready to apply a frosted glass slide to the sample chip. The frosted slides, prepared earlier, should also be clean and free of debris. If necessary, clean them with a bit of isopropyl alcohol and a fiber-free tissue or paper towel before you are ready to epoxy them. Before placing the glass slide onto the epoxy coated sample chip, make sure that you have the frosted side down and the unfrosted side up before applying it to the chip. When ready, place the slide frosted side down on one side of the chip and carefully let it fall across the surface to the other side to avoid trapping any large bubbles. Using a soft pencil eraser or even just your fingers, press down on the slide and move it around gently to squeeze out the extra epoxy and achieve a constant thickness and also to remove any air bubbles that may have been trapped. 
Although most sample chips will have cooled down some, be cautious while applying the glass slide as it may still be slightly hot to the touch. Once the glass slide is in place, carefully set the chip aside and grab the next sample ready to be epoxied. There is usually enough epoxy available from the squeeze bottles to prepare about three slides. After you have epoxied the slides to the chips, check them periodically for the first five to ten minutes to make sure the slide has not shifted or slid off of the chip. If available, sample chips may be placed in a holder such as the GeoFix to apply even force to the sample chip and a glass slide during the curing process. The epoxy will cure over the next few hours, but it's best to let it sit for 12 to 24 hours. We'll let these samples sit overnight and return to finish the thin section process by cutting the chip from the slide and grinding it down to the appropriate thickness later. 